this video, I will demonstrate how to create a silk gazar material procedurally with Substance Designer. As a node-based environment, Substance Designer works at its best when used with procedural or parametric techniques for the creation of fabrics from the ground up. It offers an incredible amount of control and flexibility at a structural fiber level and the ability to iterate design variations fast. As in the previous example, I start by creating a new Adobe Standard Material graph and I delete the nodes I will not need, such as the specularity, sheen and coat groups. I will create a material with two weave options, a basket weave and a twill weave. I start my first weave by creating a fibers 1 node, followed by a transformation 2D node. I use the bounding box in the 2D view and the parameters panel to bring the fibers toward the bottom edge of the frame and scale down its width. I also change the tiling mode to absolute and I turn off tiling. I create a second transformation node and rotate the fibers 90 degrees clockwise. Now that I have a basic thread, I want to weave it. I add a curve node, adjust it to create a wide bump on the right of the frame and rotate it counterclockwise with a transformation node. I then blend the fibers with the curve gradient as the opacity input. I add a blur between the gradient and the blend to soften the transition. I connect the blend into a tile generator's pattern input. I set the X and Y amounts to 2 and 1, the pattern to image input and the size mode to normal. I then adjust the size, position random and global offset parameters to create two threads in place of the original thread. I duplicate the tile generation node and I connect the unmasked thread to it. I reduce the color to something dark to represent the back parts of the warp and weft whereas the bright masked tile will represent the top parts. I blend the two tiles using the max blending mode. I rotate the blend 90 degrees clockwise using a transformation node, then blend the two orientations in max blending mode. Now that I can see the warp and the weft in context, I can go back to my curve and adjust it to match the two better. Here I also decided to swap the blur with a directional blur, which blurs in a specific direction. Either should be fine in this case. I rotate the weave 180 degrees and I blend it with the original in max mode. This will be my master node for my plain woven silk gazar material. To tidy up a bit, I select all existing nodes, Right click to get the context menu, select add frame and name the frame plain weave. It's also a good idea to save at this point, so I right click on my package and save it as a new file. I repeat a similar process for the second weave option, the twill. This time I make the threads thinner and bring them closer together and to the left of the frame. This time the curve is also the inverse of the previous one. Blending the tile with the curve gradient as opacity gives me this result. I rotate the full tile 90 degrees counterclockwise and blend it with the original gradient to get this. As you can see, with this weave, I chose to do the warp and the weft separately instead of making the one first and then rotating it to get the second. For this particular weave, 
This will give me more control over the final result. To start the tiling process, I connect a tile generator to the warp, set the X and Y amounts to 1 and 6, the pattern to image input, and the size mode to normal size. I need 6 repeats on the Y, as I need 6 rows and 6 columns to create this weave. I set the size to around 4, the offset to 0 0.1667, as I have 6 repeats, and the global offset to 0 0.1 and 0 0.59. To get the threads for the back part of the weave, I duplicate the node, connect the unmasked warp thread as its input and reset the offset. I give it a dark color as this will be the back weave and I blend the two in max mode to get the full warp. To complete the weave, I repeat the tiling process for the weft and blend warp and weft in max mode. With the blend node double clicked so that it is visible in the 2D view, I single click the weft tile node and adjust its global offset to match warp and weft exactly. I duplicate the weft tile generator to create the darker and masked back weft parts and blend front and back for these two. I finally blend the full weft with the full warp. This will be my master node for the twill weave. To tidy up, I select all nodes, right click and add frame. I name this frame twill weave. To be able to switch between the two weaves once I apply my material to my model, I use a multi-switch grayscale node and I connect the two. I expose the input selection parameter, call it weave kind, select drop down list as type, and I enter plane and twill as list items 1 and 2. Double-clicking on the graph background allows me to see and edit my exposed parameter settings as well as preview the effects of the parameters on the graph. I want to tile the weaves a few more times over, so I connect a tile generator to the switch node and repeat the incoming weave 200 times for the X and Y. The weave is looking a little too structured and mechanical, so it is time to add some realism. To achieve this, I connect a directional warp and I use a directional scratches node with a scale of 16 as its intensity input. Several library nodes can be used here as noise and will each give slightly different results, so this is worth taking some time to experiment with. I turn the directional warp intensity down to something small so that the effect of the scratches node is barely visible. I also expose the warp's intensity parameter so that I can access it later. I want to repeat this effect in the other axis, so I rotate the result 90 degrees using a transformation node and apply a second directional warp with the same directional scratches node as its intensity input. I expose the intensity of this second warp node as well. I use two warp nodes here so that I have two separate controls for the intensity of the distortion of the warp and the weft. Now, to derive a color map from this, I connect a gradient map node to convert my grayscale weave to color and then blend it with a uniform color in multiply mode. I expose the uniform color as weave color and connect the blend to my base color output.
to get a normal map, I connect my grayscale tiled weave node to a normal node and then the normal to the normal output. I also expose the intensity of the normal node as normal intensity. To get a roughness map, I use an invert grayscale node to invert my weave, then blend it with a grayscale uniform color in multiply mode. I connect this to the roughness output and expose the uniform color as roughness. For the metallic output, I just use a grayscale uniform color and expose it as metallic. For the height output, I use a contrast luminosity grayscale after my weave node and I expose its contrast and luminosity parameters so that I later have control over the intensity of my height map. For the opacity output, I connect a levels node to my weave and increase the contrast until I get a black and white representation of the weave. This will give me discrete black and white areas that will represent the holes in between the weave and the weave respectively. Finally, I know that this fabric is anisotropic because of its structure, so I need to apply some anisotropy to it. To do this, I will set the uniform color connected to the anisotropy level to a value of 1 and the color connected to the anisotropy angle to 0 0.35. I will expose the two colors as anisotropy level and angle. I have found these settings to work well for this kind of fabric. To recap creating the plain weave, I use a fibers 1, scale and rotate it, blend it with a curve for opacity, tile it twice, masked for the front and unmasked with a darker color for the back, blend the two, rotate them, blend original and rotate it, and repeat once more to get the final result. The process is the same for the twill weave, although here I create two different blends for the weft and the warp, and then I tile and offset them six times in each axis before blending weft and warp together. The two weaves go through a multi-switch, a tile generator that repeats them 200 times each way, and two directional warps with a directional scratches input for intensity. The graph then breaks out to a gradient map and a blend with a uniform color for the base color to an invert and blend with a grayscale color for the roughness, to a normal for the normal, to a contrast luminosity for the height, and to a levels for the opacity. I have grayscale colors connected to metallic, anisotropy level, and anisotropy angle set to 0 0.5, 1, and 0 0.35 respectively. Here is the final example displayed in Designer's 3D view. This concludes parametric fabric authoring with Substance Designer. In the next video, I will cover the texturing of hero assets with Substance Painter